I was born in the Bay Area in San Francisco, or actually East Bay, San Leandro. Uh, when I was about three years old, uh, my parents decided to send me to Hawaii where both my grandparents lived, uh, aunts, uncles. I was the only child, I think that's part of the reason why they did that, is they, they would just uh, send me there for three months, from June to August, where I would spend time with my cousins, aunts, uncles, uh, especially my grandparents. I had a really close relationship with my grandparents. And uh, it was you know, those, those three months that I would spend in Hawaii, I was exposed to the culture, uh, not just you know, the culture, the food, uh, just all the different things that, you know, that make up Hawaii, like the, the food especially. Uh, it's just all influenced by the different waves of migration from the Philippines, Japan, Korea, Portugal, China, and I just fell in love with the food there. When we moved up here, we were really young. I was 22 uh, with twin boys who were three years old, and I didn't know how to cook. My wife didn't know how to cook. Uh, so we always end up eating out or eating the same things. So I cooked one day, I followed a Rachel Ray recipe for macaroni and cheese. Uh, it took me, it's supposed to take 30 minutes. It took a lot longer than that. Um, but when I was done, I was like, whoa, I love this, I'm good at this. Let me try and learn more about this cooking stuff. So I just came by just trying to cook for my family every day. Filipino, where you know, life is built around food, um, family gatherings, um, just whenever family would come over, it'd be the greatest thing ever because all the aunties would be an army at, in the kitchen just cooking up food for all the kids. I, it all started about, I think, five, six years ago where uh, there was this platform that was moving to the West Coast. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a platform for you know, chefs or food people into food like myself uh, that want to share you know, different concepts, different menus. Uh, it's this platform called Feastly. And I had a, uh, was an acquaintance, acquaintance at the time that they asked, they, they suggested, why not, why not try doing a pop-up? A, a pop and that, never, that had never crossed my mind until like, you know, I just figured, why not? You know, it's one of those things that if I don't do it now, I'm never gonna do it. So I just came up with a menu, uh, hosted for some friends and some strangers for the first time. Like, like my involvement with food before that was just cooking for friends, family, uh, family parties, uh, whatnot. Um, and, and, that was about, it's been 400 pop-ups since then, almost. I think we're like at 390. My introduction f to food was, you know, the summers, like my initial love for food was, was through my grandfather, my grandmother. It's just, uh, it was one of those things that I just fell in love with. And I wanted to, you know, with them loving to cook, or especially my grandfather loving to cook, I just wanted to ex be able to experience uh, and how to prepare, like just some of the most basic dishes. And it just, you know, it eventually just grew from there. My philosophy is I'm going to wallop you with flavor. Like, I try to put flavor in everything I have. So if, if maybe everything's not perfect, but you can never say it wasn't flavorful. So I just try to round out Filipino flavors with some sweetness, with some heat. So it's a complete dish that Filipinos haven't had before. But they know, hey, this is kind of like pinak bed. This is kind of, this is like adobo, but it's new. I've never had it this way. What, one of the hurdles for making Filipino food mainstream is if you give Filipino food to a Filipino, their first compliment is, oh, it's cheap. So let's go here, it's cheap. Um, they give you a lot of food. And then, then there's criticisms. My auntie doesn't make it like that. My mom doesn't make it like that. When you eat Korean food with my Korean friends, we go Korean barbecue. Not one of my Korean friends will say, my mom does better Korean barbecue than this. If you go to Chinese food, my Chinese friends don't criticize it based on what their mom cooks. So if Filipinos can put that aside, that everybody has their own take, and some chefs are trying to elevate that, um, then that's where I want to take it. I want to show that, hey, you paid $40 for a plate of ravioli, which, you know, because people are conditioned that Italian food can be expensive. We need to condition people. We can elevate Filipino food too, where it is worth the premium you're paying for. Uh, today we're doing a few different Filipino dishes. So the first one is a shrimp lumpia. Uh, it's not your most traditional Filipino dish, but my mom, uh, it's inspired by my mom's cooking. Uh, she, I think the, the, the whole story behind it is she used to love going 
where she would order this dish at a Chinese restaurant, probably the, the least authentic dish on the menu, uh, crab rangoon. And so she, I think she decided she'd go home. Uh, she really, I think I can make it better. So it kind of her like her reaction to it. So she, what she did is she butterfly the shrimp, uh, which if you're not familiar with crab, crab rangoon, it's just imitation crab, cream cheese, wrapped in a wonton shell and deep fried. So she butterflied the shrimp, added the cream cheese, scallions, chives, mixed it in, wrapped it up in a loopy wrapper, then deep fried it. And so that was her version. It, it's pretty much stuck with us as one of our popular dishes on the menu. So that's the appetizer dish. Uh, we're doing two braised meats. One is uh, a pork uh, beagle express, which has been cooked for about six hours. Lemongrass, ginger, fish sauce, uh, salted shrimp paste with bagel um, chicken stock, and that's been cooked down. Um, we're pulling the pork, serving that on uh, with the rice. And we're doing a braised uh, beef dish, which is a bistec. Uh, it's cooked in calamansi, soy sauce, ginger, garlic, and some other spices. And then for dessert, we're doing a uh, bibinka, which is the coconut rice cake. And we're actually doing one more dish is the vegetables that are cooked in uh, coconut cream or uh, ginatan. Tonight I am cooking a, my take on chicken inasal, which is a Filipino barbecue roasted chicken. Uh, my take on it is I use uh, a local ginger soda called Pok Pok Vinegar Drinking Soda. Uh, I try to tie in local flavors, local products into my um, dishes. I'm also making uh, Brussels sprouts with Filipino XO sauce. Uh, XO sauce starts with two packs of bacon. So you know it's going to be good, and it ends with a little bit of bagaong, which is fermented shrimp paste. It gives it a real unique umami, let's say. People call it funk, like good funk. Specifically in Portland, I would love to see the Filipino community come together more often and support uh, everybody's dreams and passions. Um, we're still kind of splintered. Um, I know they're out there. I've seen them at Joe Koi concerts. So I just, you know, it's just getting out there and supporting the Filipino community is what we need to do, um, come together, because uh, we need to represent. We need to be the next Asian community to be the next big thing. As far as the dishes itself, it's always been inspired by things that my family would cook, things that I would experience at a family party. Uh, you know, my travels to the Philippines. So those are, in terms of like the, the concepts and the ideas, that's where they come from. Uh, as far as creativity, it's just, uh, I think just, sharing an extension of myself and, and being able to share like my style of you know, whether it's presenting a dish, uh, plating, whatnot, and, um, which is, you know, I want to say more of a modern style. Um, as well, growing up in, in a Filipino household, you know, we were always serve almost every dish in a bowl and it's um, where a lot of the dishes almost look the same but the flavors were completely different. So my, my, well, the way I interpret it is to try to make things, things stand out and make, you know, try to give the dish a, an appealing look to it as well. My, my grandmother would make this egg dish with uh, eggplants, fish sauce, uh, the green onions and onions. And it's probably one of the, you know, the, the most, has one of the most pungent smells, but I think I, I just fell in love with that dish. I could eat that any day, any, any meal of the day, with just uh, eggs and rice. So probably those two are the ones that stood out the most. If you have this passion and you can't shake it, just go for it, you know, but always have, like Asians, you need a safety net, right? If you're going to tell your Filipino parent you're not going to be a nurse, you better have a plan where you don't have to keep coming back for money. Um, so that my plan was Intel. And then, so I have that base and I just pursue cooking. So find your passion and find a way to support your passion. As far as my philosophy when it comes to life, I think it's just to, to try and make the most out of each moment, enjoy every moment. And especially when it comes to food, uh, to be able to, sh to share my food like on a larger platform, people that I don't know, um, it's in the ex it, there's a lot of the food that I create is based or inspired by my ex personal experience. So it's, it's meaningful to be able to share the dishes that I grew up on personally, um, whether it was something I, I learned from my parents, grandparents, uh, or just experiences in general.